What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Water Nice Outdoors Live. This is something I don't typically do, uh, but today I'm out here and we are live streaming from the ice, and I'm out here tip up fishing, and we're going for pike. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been uh, pretty crappy. Uh, been out here for about two hours, all set up, and um, haven't had a single flag, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we get on it and uh, it'll be a good day. So, looks like we got one person in here so far. Welcome. I can't see who you are yet, but uh, thanks for joining me. As I said, we're out here on a lake in uh, the Twin Cities area, just north of the Twin Cities here in Minnesota. Um, tip up fishing. Been slow so far, but um, hopefully, hopefully we get some flat pretty soon here. Oh, what's going on, fishing fool? Catch any more of those big walleye? All right, I got a couple people filtering in here. Thanks for joining us here on Water Nice Outdoors. We are tip up fishing, in case you missed it. Uh, we're going for pike. And we're just north of the Twin Cities area here in Minnesota. And uh, sitting in my clam here, as you can probably see. And I just wait for flags. So it's been a slow morning. Um, I've got uh, one clam thermal tip up out with a large sucker on a quick strike rig. And I've also got a iFish Pro up um, with a little bit smaller sucker on it. Um, just on a sure set treble hook and uh, we were sitting in we're sitting on a point That's in I've got one of my tip-ups is in Hey, Travis, how you doing man? Good to see ya um, I've got one of my tip-ups sitting in about 10 feet of water where the weeds are coming up uh, probably looked like about to about five foot depth um, nice green weeds and uh, the other one's sitting in about 14 feet of water with um, weeds coming up to about 10 feet. So really clear lake. Um, it's one of the best, one of the best, uh, lakes for water clarity, uh, in the twin cities. I believe it's like 17, 18 feet of water clarity. Uh, my fire department actually does dive drills out here because the water clarity is so clear. Let me see if I can flip the camera around and I'll actually show you guys how clear the water is. See if you guys can actually see it. So we're sitting in 12 feet of water and those weeds are laying down on the bottom and you can see them all the way down there it's, the water clarity is pretty uh pretty crazy in this lake so it's it's pretty fun um typically the pike fishing is really good out here but um this year this year has just been tough for tip-ups all around i don't know what's uh i don't know what the deal is but uh it's kind of frustrating i haven't caught a fish on a tip up in probably a month so um i granted i haven't been getting out all that much but um it's been a struggle with the ice season so um just give you a little tour of my little abode here um this is my clam it's nice and spacious see i got a second seat there nice sled down there um and plenty of fishing room here it's uh pretty nice you can comfortably fit 
two guys in here and you can actually probably get two two holes each which is pretty nice um super warm in here with my buddy heater i'm it's probably about 70 degrees in here i'm actually kind of baking and i got my i got my air vents open uh because you know it gets pretty toasty in here with with the heater going and um i don't even have my jacket on right now i just have a really uh really nice black fish um i think it's called the gale hoodie got some polar fleece on the inside and it's just super warm so um i'm gonna take you outside and just kind of show you what we're doing here and as you can see hopefully we don't fog up completely um there's one of my tip ups out here this is the one that's shallow It's uh, one of Clam's Pro Thermal tip-ups. I've actually been pretty impressed with these. Uh, I've just started using them this year, but they're kind of like that uh, extra solid uh, HT tip-ups that, that HT makes. Uh, really nice flag. It's got the thermal styrofoam in there, and it's it's been really nice. Here's my uh, Yukon from the outside. Super nice tent, super nice shack to fish out of. And then we got the old beauty here. Just got her running again. She's running great. 87 Indy 400. And that girl just purrs when she's running well, and she is right now. So I'm pretty pretty happy because that, that, that pop-up is not light. Hey, True North, thanks for joining us here. So for all you that are just joining, I'm out here just north of uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis area. Tip up fishing for Northern Pike. It's been a slow morning. Sorry for any wind noise you're getting. Hopefully it's not too bad. Walking kind of into the wind. Here's my uh, iFish Pro setup. And I do use blue tips. Hey, no wind noise. Hey Bailey, how's it going? So I do use these blue tip um, indicators and they're super nice. They have a light on them and also they're Bluetooth. So you turn them on and you download the app to your phone and you get uh, um, noise alerts to uh, your phone whenever your flag goes up. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about not seeing a fish if you're jigging in your in your shack and you're not really paying attention to any of the uh, any of your flags. So it's super nice. You don't really have to keep looking out every couple minutes to make sure your flag didn't go off. And um, it's just a nice setup. And then this is my iFish Pro, obviously. Um, the nice thing about these, for those that don't ice fish all that much, uh, you're able to use a rod and reel. And it's just got a little trip system right here that hooks onto your line focus and once a fish pulls it it pulls this little clip down and this goes off of this little uh, tab here and your flag goes up and then you can fight it on your rod and reel yeah <laughs> true north noise alerts yeah it's you know it's not uh i guess it's high tech but it's pretty easy to use and and usually when i'm out here i'm fishing something else as well or i'm jigging for pan fish or something and it's just super nice to not have to always pay attention to your flags. And then this is my tuned up custom rod dead stick. It's designed for dead sticking. And then I have a Akuma Avenger bait feeder reel here, which is nice because you can see it's almost like a clicker bait or a clicker reel. And you have two separate drag systems there. So you can uh, set the hook and or flip the the bait runner feature off and then right when you set the hook your drag is set exactly where you want it and i have my flasher here and that's actually not for uh for you know finding the fish or reading the depth but i actually have my ice defense unit i don't know if you guys have you guys have probably if you follow me at all you've seen my posts about these um, i'll just show you guys it's this little tube here that circulates warmer water from lower in the hole. Here, I'll actually get it in, in focus for you here in view. Um, and they're super nice. You can see how 
how uh, ice free that hole is. And one of the big complaints with iFish Pros, hole or your hole freezes up um, super easily. Sorry guys, I'm not exactly paying attention to what I'm doing here. But one of the one of the big complaints about those iFish Pros is that uh, your hole freezes up real fast because uh, there's no real thermal protection on them. So those ice defense units are super nice. And they're actually making some of the iFish Pros, uh, they're actually modifying them so that you can actually hold one of those ice defense units like built in, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna go back in my shack because it's cold and uh, we'll go ahead and have a little conversation while we do this live stream. Zip up here real quick. All right, guys. It's about, I don't know, 10 degrees here. And, um, you know, it's a little breezy, but not too bad. So it's, it's, it's not a bad day. I wish the bite was a little better, but hopefully uh, in the next few hours here, we'll, we'll get on something. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Been a little uh, tough morning so far, but we're hoping for some flags. So I thank all you guys for joining and uh, thanks for coming in and, and watching. So uh, how's everybody's ice season been going? I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it's it's been kind of a grind for me. Uh, fishing fool had to take the spoon off and rig up. Well, hopefully your dead sticks are doing better than mine because it's been a struggle so far this morning. So. Um, as I said, super clear lake and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a struggle, but you know, that's, that's fishing for you. You can't come out and crush it all the time. So what's, uh, how's everybody's season been going so far? Um, those of you that have been on the ice, um, Travis, I know you've been down South. Your bite's been pretty good. Um, oh, Northwoods. Is Luke in here? I didn't see you pop in here. Kyle, how's it going, man? I know it's slow, dude. You're, you're telling me, man. I wish I wish we were catching something here. It'd be a heck of a lot better video. But uh, uh, Travis, I know I, I went down and fished with Travis. Fishing today. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Modern Night Outdoors. Uh, pretty good for you so far. Good, good. Um, where's everybody from also? As I said, I'm here in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area. I'm fishing about an hour north of there right now. Um, it's only about 20 minutes north of my house, but um, pretty good, pretty good uh, pike lake typically. Oh, <laughs> now I got the bass fishing smack talk going down. All right. Uh, Luke, have you been on any good uh, pike pike bites uh, this, this ice season, man? I, I just... I can't get on it, man. It's an absolute struggle. All right, we got some for St. Cloud. Fishing Fools over in Wisconsin. I know that. He's gotten a few flags today. Jacob Wickman, thanks for joining. Guys, if you want to hit that thumbs up button for me, it does help the, the live stream and the channel. Yeah, uh, North. Yeah, I, that makes sense because this down here in the cities, man, it's been an absolute struggle. A lot of little pan fish, not the real hot, aggressive bite that, that it is a lot of times during the year, but um, it's it's been a struggle. Luke, you're not in Tennessee, are you? Fishing fools in Star Prairie, all right. I was gonna say, no way. <laughs> I man, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm today. The last few times I've been out, I've been very close to leaving the ice and just going and getting my boat. And then I just have to go and sit in it until the ice, uh, until the ice melts. But he's totally drunk. <laughs> oh man. Travis, I had a buddy go down to uh, to that lake we fished panfish again 
or uh, a few weeks ago, and he went down there and he said that spot we were on had about 200 wheelhouses and uh, and sh permanent shacks on it, which I don't doubt, but I, it blows my mind that out there, kind of in the middle of nowhere, it just it blows up that much. But uh, you know, it was a good spot, that's for sure. Yeah, Kyle, man, you you guys just got you got a raw deal on on uh on devils this year yeah travis that's what he said he said the walleye hole had a ton of spot a ton of permanents and then the uh the panfish time or the panfish the panfish spot that we fished was just over with people it's crazy river walleyes yeah i'm not gonna lie i was i was I was debating whether to go to the river and fit shore fish walleye um, or come out here and pike fish, but I've been trying to get a tip-up video out for you guys forever, and it's just been such a struggle that it, it just hasn't worked. Uh, better catch go more smallmouth. Yeah, that would work too. That's always a, that's always a, a given that you're going to catch smallmouth. What do we got here? Devil's a waste of time. Uh... I would have to disagree with that. I've had a, I've had some great days out on devils. Did good on big stone. Yeah, Travis, I saw those pictures. It looked like you had a good time out there. So, yeah. So, uh, what, uh, what did everybody think of the Super Bowl? I thought it was a pretty good game. I didn't really have a dog in the fight and didn't really care who won, but it was a good game. I was. The 49ers did what I thought they were going to do to Patrick Mahomes, but he kind of, uh, they kind of blew it in the second half. Halftime show sucked, yeah. Don't they all, though, really? I haven't paid attention to a halftime show since I don't even know when. Twins, yes, Kyle. I think I heard it was like six days till the Twins come back to the Twins pitchers and catchers report, so it'll be good. Oh, uh, fishing fool, you're on the lax right now? That's sweet. So it must be slow up there too, but it's midday, so you'll probably you'll probably get going. Those primetime bites are always up there no matter what time of the year on Malax. <laughs> uh, somehow that doesn't surprise me. I'm not gonna lie, it's two good looking women on that halftime show that uh that know how it moves, so I wasn't complaining about that. Not quite as entertaining as your video, Luke, but um, still, still easy to watch. Man, we need a flag. So if you guys hear, if you guys hear a like nuclear alarm or like it sounds like a nuclear bomb's about to hit, that's my tip-up alarm. Just so you know. Uh, I live 10 yards from No Name Lake, so I could be on the lake. Oh, all right. <clears throat> I was out on the St. Croix sturgeon fishing. That sounds like a good time. That's always fun. I haven't done that in a while. For those of you that don't know, I have a bass boat. And I have serious anxiety about taking it out on the river, which... I've heard a lot of people give me grief about it that it's not that bad, but I just I don't have the money to fix fiberglass because <laughs> it's so freaking expensive. Uh, if I, you know, put a gouge in it or something, so I'm pretty hesitant about going up on the rivers. But I think the Saint Croix. I've been I've taken it out of the Saint Croix a few times with smallmouth fish, but um, it'd be pretty fun to go out and sturgeon fish again. It's always that's always a really good time. All right, let's see here. Ooh, that was a good crack. All right. Nothing there, because I moved my tip up. Where, there it is. No flag. I'm confused. What'd you say, Luke? I'm confused why you're not. I'm your boat right now. <laughs> Well, ah. 
I fish pro way off there. Oh, in my boat right now. Yeah, that's fair. I'm telling you. I don't want to get out there, man. I, I want to get out there, but it's just, I don't know. Something about the rivers makes me nervous, but I'll get over it eventually. So I will be going up to Mille Lacs, not this weekend, but the next weekend uh, for the Ducks Unlimited fishing contest. It's the fishing with ducks. I'm going to be up there with uh, the ice defense guys and we'll have a tent up there and we'll be selling ice defense units. Three more over 10 pounds. Good Lord, Luke. You guys are crushing it out there. That's just depressing. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've seen I've seen some pictures, Travis. It's it's pretty impressive. I know they're in there, man. That the river just makes some absolute giants. It's gosh, I love fishing it, and I I just need butt to butt to get out there with my boat. Um, but yeah, one of these days it'll happen. So, but yeah, I'll be up with ice defense on Mille Lacs. Um, we're going to have a booth and then also, um, they're actually, we just decided to run a sale on the ice defense. So starting today, uh, 20% off Luke is good with Photoshop <laughs> starting today, 20% off of the ice defense pro series unit. So that, uh, little blue tube and, and, uh, and uh, control box that was on my flasher out by my iFish Pro. Um, that's gonna be on sale for, um, I believe 20% 20 20 off puts it around, I think, um, right around 80 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal, 20 bucks off. And uh, I'm, I know a lot of people think that it's um, too much money, which, you know, that's fine, um, just to keep your hole open. But if you're running iFish Pros, if you're, uh, fishing in really cold weather, it's invaluable and it works. Um, it's not a bubbler. It's not an aerator. Um, what it does is pulls warmer water up from lower in your ice hole and recirculates it um, on top of the water surface. And it actually melts uh, the slush and the ice that's on your hole and keeps it from, uh, from freezing. So uh, James Holst from In-Depth Outdoors did a really cool video. Um, testing it and timing it to see how long it takes to melt the ice to melt the slush and comparing it to like a bubbler or an aerator um and it's pretty impressive um before i started working with these guys um i was really interested in these and i got to test some out and um put them through the tests and i've been really impressed with them so um if you're interested if you go to um, coldnationoutdoors.com, you can uh, put in, I believe it's DU20 is the, is the promo code, and you'll get 20% off your ice defense order. Um, it's a good deal, and it's just a really awesome product. They fit on any flasher. Um, they connect right to your flasher battery, and um, it's, so it's like a life straw, but you don't have to drink it. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what to say to that. Um, it's, it, it's a really cool piece of technology. Um, and it, it, it's reliable and it connects right to your flasher battery and I've been super impressed with it. So check it out if you, if you haven't yet. Um, but if you are interested, 20% off, um, DU for like Ducks Unlimited, and then, um, and then uh, get your twenty percent off. So, enough of the uh, ad campaign here. Let's get some freaking flags, man! It's unreal. It's been so slow. So, who all out there is fishing, and who all's out there working? I kind of have an idea of who it is, but um, just to make things interesting. Kyle, I know you're kind of working. You work from home. I'm actually going to be able to, uh, yeah, Kyle, I know. <laughs> Luke, you're working. 
Um, I have to go to work in a couple hours here, but um, it's the nice thing about working evenings is I get to get out in the morning most of the time, at least when my wife's home, so I'm not watching the baby, but um, I have an open seat for Saturday or Sunday. You know what? Travis, you going somewhere? You going to the beach? Going to work soon, school, yeah. That's a nice thing, like I said. The nice thing about uh, working evenings is I get to get out most mornings and, and, and do some ice fishing. It's not the greatest time of the day to get out. I wish I could fish evening more, uh, but, you know, it's still getting out here and he's putting tape. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He's in Key West right now. Well, isn't that nice? I'll be in Clearwater Beach uh, in about a month, Florida, so that's going to be pretty sweet. Um, last year I was there, um, I did some pier fishing and got a couple really nice tips for uh, fishing for sheep's head uh, along the piling. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that again. I have off school. Oh, somebody's uh, somebody's sick. ICAST. No, not ICAST. I think I'm probably going to go this year, though. Um, I've got a ticket reserved from with line cutters. So hopefully... Hopefully I'll be able to get there. That's kind of a that's kind of a dream trip for me. I think going to ICAST would be super cool. A lot of good marketing times and uh, a good uh, a lot of good time to make some connections. Coronavirus. I'm not going to China. But uh, yeah, so Malax and then Florida, and hopefully we'll get some. Um... Oh, does he have coronavirus? Yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to get some videos out here for you. It's I've been working on this pike video and it's just been brutal. The tip up fishing has just been just awful around here. And um, I've got some really good walleye spots that we've just actually absolutely hammered walleye on the last two, three years. And this year it has just been dead sea. I mean, I've been out there three, four nights and I think I've caught one 13 inch walleye. Whereas last year we were catching double digit walleye some nights. Um, and that, that's a, a big, highly pressured Metro Lake that a buddy and I put the time in and really learned it and learned the fish patterns over the last couple of years. And it's this year it's just completely changed and water levels way up again. So that, that may give it up for some of you that are around the Metro, but the water levels up to, almost historic levels again. And I think that's pushed the fish off some of the deep structure that they're typically on. So, uh, do you fish Tonka a lot? I actually, I don't know if I've ever fished Tonka, to be honest. Um, I live in the Northeast Metro. Um, not that I don't drive other places to go, uh, fish that are f that far away. I mean, it's only, it's less than an hour from me, but um, I don't want to fish it on the weekends, honestly, especially, especially, uh, the amount of traffic that it gets in the summer and honestly in the winter, uh, the winter is probably a little better, but, um, I do want to fish it at some point because all you ever hear is just that it's such a great lake, bass, pike, muskie, ice fishing. It's a great lake. It really is. So. Um, at some point, probably this summer, honestly, I'll probably go bass fish it. Um, and if I do greenhorn bass tour again, that's one of the lakes. So I, I will be fishing it again. Um, but ice fishing, I don't know. I probably won't get out there. I want Travis. I want to be the blackfish attorney. Um, if I don't do greenhorn this year, um, I think I might, I think I might do the blackfish attorney. 50% well, I'm sorry what was that 50% of the people in chat has have videos yeah I mean you got to support each other on here so um, live streams are a good way to do it make sure you check out Northwoods Angling I'll give shout outs here I don't mind Northwoods Angling is a great channel Twin Cities Outdoors hey how you doing? thanks for stopping in they have he's got a channel as well check him out um, 
Big TNT that's in here, Travis. I think you have a I think you have a YouTube channel, don't you, Travis? I know you do uh I know you do um uh oh, what's that video game one? I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> I'm not I'm not much of a gamer. What's the what's the live stream? You gamer guys, what's the live stream uh Twitch. Thank you. Twitch. I think I'm Travis does some live streams on tr Twitch. Um and Luke typically does some live streams, but, um, uh, so Twin Cities, I am on, um, a lake. I'm not going to say the name, but I'm on a lake, um, just about 45 minutes north of the Twin Cities, kind of in the Forest Lake area. Um, but it's not one of the typical Forest Lake fishing lakes. So, um, who else did we have in here that's got channels? Uh, Twin Cities Outdoors. Um, Northwoods Angling, obviously. If I miss it, you know, just put your put yourself on here. Uh, True North Angling is another one that I don't know if he's still in here. He was in here. Um, he's got a nice channel. Um, Northwoods Angling's probably one of the bigger ones um that comes in here they do a lot of trophy fishing for catfish sturgeon alligator gar a lot of really cool videos um oh fishing today he's got a channel as well i'll have to check that out um but yeah i mean it's all about supporting each other on here i don't i don't mind giving shout outs i don't mind talking about other channels because you know my hope is that if I talk about them, they'll return the favor and talk about me as well. And collaborating is pretty much everything on, on YouTube to get your name out there. And Luke and Northwoods Outdoors and True Ang True North Angler uh, or True North Angling, they've done, they've done um, a nice job of helping me out, especially Northwoods Angling. Uh, Luke really got me started doing this and uh, kind of held my, held my hand along the way. So it's been uh it's been a fun ride been doing it for about two years and uh we're just kind of grinding away we're we're almost at 1650 followers i think subscribers so uh, about to go over 150,000 views so it's been good it's 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 been fun it's a grind but but it's fun it's it's fun trying to um find cool shots i really enjoy um trying to find cool angles and cool shots to put in videos um unfortunately my my editing skills aren't uh quite up to the par or where i'd like them to be but um it's a pretty complicated game so um i'm just trying to get better each video and and uh take it from there and hopefully someday uh hopefully someday uh yeah <laughs> fish and fool pester me you don't pastor me, man. I appreciate the support you give me. So one of these days we'll actually get out there. Whopper plopper video this year. Yeah, it's Oh yeah. Minnesota Fishing Brothers. Yeah, Matt. Sorry, man. Totally totally spaced on that one. Make sure you check them out too. They uh is your is your uh Matt, is your is your catch and release pike still still the state record that you caught on that fly rod? That was that was awesome. I'm pretty sure that was you. I hope that was you. Um, I'm pretty sure that was that was you guys. But, uh, yep. So, if you haven't seen it, check out. Go to Minnesota Fishing Brothers and check it out. They caught, I think it was last year, they caught. Um, at the time, it was the state record for catch and release uh, for Northern Pike. And they caught it on a fly rod. And it's a it's a crazy battle. It, it was it was uh, it was pretty fun to watch. I enjoyed it, and I can't even imagine catching a fish like that on a fly rod. That was pretty sweet. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep grinding along. There's gonna be more bass videos this year, more shore fishing videos, hopefully some more ice fishing videos if I ever get on some fish sometime here. Um, hoping to make one uh, when I'm up on Malax next weekend. And then i um, hoping to go to, hopefully going to Lake of the Woods uh, late March. Um, and we're going to be going up way up to the, the northwest corner 
and doing some walleye fishing and hopefully some big pipe fishing up there as well. So um, hopefully some more good videos coming in uh, in this winter uh, or, or the, the last couple of months of this winter. Um, and then hopefully, I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of hope it's going to be a uh, an early spring because I'd love to get the... I'd love to get the uh, boat out. Can I get you on some? Yeah, Twin Cities, man. I'd, I'll, I'll, I'll connect with anybody. I'll collab with anybody. So, um, it's been, it's been a little brutal up here in the North Metro for, uh, for tip ups, as we've said, um, and just kind of in general, it's been a tough bite this year. So, um. But uh, yeah, a couple more videos coming, hopefully this this uh, this ice season, and uh, then we're gonna dive into uh, shore fishing for walleye because when the Mississippi River opens up, well, it's already open as uh, as Luke and the Northwoods boys are, are uh, proving. But once that opens up a little more for shore fishing, um, I'm gonna be out there because the early spring is unbelievable time to shore fish. Uh, river walleye or um, or on the boat for that matter um, and pool two is such an incredible fishery it's so much fun you never know what you're going to catch and every species has a trophy fish in that system or multiple trophy fish in that system it's it's an absolute blast um, so those will be coming then probably some pan fish videos as well as uh, some bass fishing videos. Hopefully some tournament vi videos uh, as long as I'm doing tournaments this year. That's kind of still up in the air. But hopefully hopefully I'll be doing tournament video uh, tournaments again this summer. Uh, it's going to depend on if I have time with the family or not. So um, other than that, what are you guys up to? Um, I'm just sitting here waiting for a flag and it's, it just doesn't seem to want to happen. So running at about uh did i get that drone matt no i have not gotten the drone um i've had some other expenses that uh, i've i've had to put some of my savings towards lately so um still want to that's a goal of mine i think it adds a ton of videos i think you get some really cool shots with drones um but at the moment looking like uh maybe looking like maybe uh this summer I'll probably be getting one. So hopefully uh, you'll start to see some of that footage in my summer videos because that'd be awesome. I'd love to do some chase video, some chase footage in my boat, with the drone following me, or uh, just some overhead bird's eye shots of me on the boat making some casts. I love those shots. I think they're really sweet. Um, Fish the Fool, you were talking about the amped. Tell Luke to give you his drone. He's not using it. Well... Luke, you know where to find me. I don't want to crash somebody else's drone, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm somewhat terrified of crashing a drone if I do get one. But uh, Fishing Fool, you were talking about uh, Amped Outdoors or Amped Up Lithium. Amped, amped Outdoors Lithium. Um, I have one. They're lithium batteries for your chargers. Um, or for your chargers, for your flashers. And... The nice thing about them is they cut down the weight on your unit by about half or more. Um, they're the same size as a regular um, uh, lead core battery that your normal flasher battery that you'd see on your on your flashers, but um, they are much lighter and the the uh, output that they have is so much greater. This is my helix. I'm gonna flip the camera around here. This is my Helix setup, and typically with the Helix, you get about, with a standard lead battery, you'd get about four hours on full brightness, and um, with the Amped Outdoors battery, the lithium batteries, and there are others that are just as nice, um, Dakota Lithium is real nice. Um, and I think there's one other that I can't, uh, I can't think of the name at the moment, but, uh, at full brightness for screen settings, this, this lithium battery gets me about 16 hours of life, uh, instead of the typical four that you get with a normal battery. And you can see here, it's still, 
kind of hard to see in there, but it's still the same size as a regular uh, lead core battery. And uh, you just get so much more, so much more life out of your battery, which is huge with running these Helix because they drain battery like crazy. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to, let's get outside here. I'm going to go outside if I can find my sunglasses so I don't get blinded. Sorry for the uh, shoddy camera footage here. But let's go outside and see what's going on here. I mean, obviously there's nothing going on. Well, let's check our stuff here. Norsk, that's right, Matt. That's another company. So nothing going on here, obviously. And try not to kill ourselves on the ice. It was mid 40s here. Sorry for wind noise if there is any walking in the wind. It was actually mid 40s here two days ago. And it's melted a lot of the snow. But now that it's uh, about 10 degrees today, everything's hardened back up. Which I don't mind, but it's a little slippery. And of course, I didn't wear my uh, my spikes or my cleats, my ice cleats. All right, still nothing. But look at that ice defense keeping everything wide open. God, I'm like a walking commercial. But, I mean, I'm telling you, I absolutely believe in in that product. It's been, it's been awesome for me. So, um, yeah, Twin Cities, iFish Pros are nice, man. They, they're, I'd, I'd rather fish, or I'd rather catch a fish on a rod and reel, or fight a fish on a rod and reel, than hand line them any day. And that's why the iFish Pro is so nice. For those of you that didn't see uh, old Bessie here, this is my 1987 Indy 400. She's in great condition other than the uh, floppy windshield and my expired tabs. Don't tell anybody. By the way, those went up this year and I'm kind of mad about it. It's like 60 bucks now. It's like 60 bucks now to get your snowmobile tabs. And I know it's for like, it's like, what, three years I think it is, but God, everything's going up these days and it's kind of, it's just kind of a pain. Ugh. 43 minutes, that's pretty good for me. Luke, I don't know. I don't know if you're still in here, man, but I don't know how you do these things for two hours, man. That blows my mind. Especially when you're sitting here not catching anything. That's even that's even crazier. So what's uh what's everybody fishing for these days? Um I know a lot of you guys are at work right now, but um what's your next what's your next trip look like? What's your next trip on the ice going for? Panfish, walleye, pike? What are you guys going for? Nothing. All right. <laughs> no answers. There's plenty of here. I know you can answer questions. Nobody's fishing for anything? Ooh, $65 for tabs, man. That's crazy. I think the last one I, when I got mine in 2019, or I know it was earlier than that. My tabs expired in 2019. Um, so 2016, I probably got them. Um, I think they were like 35 bucks. It's, it's insane. They just, I, I don't know. It's for three years, so it's really not that bad, but it just seems like a lot. Okay, let's see. Twin Cities Outdoors caught a bunch of gills yesterday. Nice. Jacob's getting a buzz. That's always good. 
Jack, night bite walleyes, very nice. Matt, cool bass bite. I saw that. That was that was pretty cool. Are you getting those on tip ups or are you doing rod and reel? Fishing today. What? It's easy to talk on camera. I catch myself talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially when you're not catching fish, you just start mumbling to yourself all day long. That's kind of what I'm doing. So. Um, I appreciate everybody coming in here and um, if you haven't yet please hit that thumbs up button it really helps the channel and um, if you aren't a subscriber to Water Nice Outdoors please check it out and if you like the videos click that subscribe button um, I really appreciate it and I really appreciate everybody coming in here and hanging out so we're going about gonna put the camera down soon oh fishing fools getting busy He's, he, he means business now. That ice is cracking. All that warm weather we just had, and now it's now it's gotten cold again, and that ice is building. So we got about, I'd say, 15 inches of ice. I'll give you the I'll give you the ice hole cam again here. So we got a it's a good amount of ice there. It doesn't look Sorry, I'm back. I hit the uh, <laughs> I hit the power button on my phone. So as I mentioned earlier, we're on a super clear body of water. I'm sitting in about 15 feet of water, 12 feet of water, and you can see the weeds all the way down there. And they're laying down. They're not uh, they're not standing up, but they're not quite as green as I'd like, and that might be why we're not catching uh, we're not getting a ton of fish. But they're still green. Uh, so it's, I don't know, the bite window wasn't exactly, uh, right now either, according to some of the charts, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get out and fish. Let's see if we got anything going on here. I don't know if my, I don't know if my, uh, my blue tips will work with, uh, this live stream going. I honestly don't know, but, um, um, we'll sit here for a little longer and just hang out. So, what? Uh, anybody got any big trips coming up? I know Travis, you were saying you're you're in Key West right now. Um, I'll be going up to Mille Lacs and Lake of the Woods pretty soon here. Um, anybody else? Anybody else going anywhere fun? Um, Fishing fool, I know you're up on. I know you're up on uh, Mille Lacs. Matt, yeah, high pressure. It seems like there's been a lot of high pressure this this winter, so it's been I don't know, man. It's just been it's been a slow winter for me. Usually, usually I don't have too much issue with ice fishing, but especially tip ups, man. I got I got so many lakes around the Twin Cities that have just crazy pike in them, and not necessarily size, but just a ton of fish. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's a uh, Maybe I need to go to Big Marine and catch 17-inch hammer handles all day long. At least we'd be getting some action. But Instead, I'm here trying to get that uh, 35 to 40-inch pike. So I do have some larger suckers out there, which may be, may be hindering my chances of getting, you know, numbers. But I really want to get that big pike because I know they're in here. Yes, the streams, man. I Twin Cities Outdoors, I I I got into trout fishing for the first time last spring. And I am not a fly fisherman. Um I have no idea how to do it. Um and I really don't I really don't I'll be honest, I really don't have any interest in fly fishing, but um trout fishing all my buddies that do it just get these pictures of unbelievable places that they're catching these trout in and so i want to do it just to be able to go fish in these places um the rush river in wisconsin um where i went last year uh you're fishing with rock walls on either side of you and it just this beautiful beautiful small river crystal clear i mean and there's just brown trout everywhere and it's a blast. And I was catching them on spinning gear. Um, 
and uh and uh you know and like an inline spinner uh i think it was a uh, panther martin but um it's just a blast i mean it's it's just a beautiful place to fish and extremely extremely relaxing it was it was really really a cool experience and um and i'm planning on doing it doing it again um actually this last week would have been really good because it was up in the 40s um, and possibly some of those bug hatches might have happened and gotten those trouts active. So, you know, it's it's coming up soon. But, um, yeah, Twin Cities Outdoors, uh, that's what people told me. A Meps or Panther Martin or, like, a, a original floating wrap was the other, was the other uh, lure that someone told me about. I'm a cheesehead fan, even though I can't have it. I lived here my whole life. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm not a Packer fan, but um, I will admit I absolutely love fishing in Wisconsin. Um, almost almost more than fishing in Minnesota. Um, the more and more I fish over there, the more and more I like it. And um, one of the reasons is because in the winter you can have three lines and you can only have two lines here in Minnesota. It drives me freaking crazy. Um, the perfect setup is just you know, one regular tip up, one dead stick next to you and, and jigging right next to that dead stick and you can't do it here. And it drives me crazy. So, um, another thing that I'm looking forward to that I've heard, um, is in the works is a continuous year long catch and release bass season in Wisconsin. Um, which is another reason if that passes, I'm really going to enjoy fishing in Wisconsin. Um, I am a self-admitted bass lover. Um, that's what I love to fish for the most. Um, and here in Minnesota, as most of you know, because I think a lot of you are from Minnesota in here, but um, you can't fish bass until the... Um, Minnesota opener and that's catch and release only still not that anyone keeps bass, but um, I heard a rumor that uh, Yeah, I heard a rumor that it's going through um, The the government um, the, the Wisconsin DNR Has gotten their proposal accepted and it just needs to go through um, all the channels to get put in place uh, for a continuous for a continuous uh, catch and release bass season, which would be so awesome up here because we never get to fish uh, pre-spawn bass and barely even get to fish spawning bass up here in Minnesota because we don't get to start bass fishing until May. Um, so hopefully, I don't know, uh, you know, Matt was saying on the, on the chat here that um, it's going for next year. Um, I heard that they're trying to push it for this year, um, but we'll see. We, you know, we all know how, how the government works and, and how slow they do things. So, But hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to bass fish right at Ice Out. Right, right at Ice Out. I, ice Out. I've been doing this too long. I can't talk. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to bass fish right at Ice Out. Uh, in Wisconsin, and that'll be an absolute blast. I'm looking forward to that so much um, because, oh yeah, Twin Cities. I've trust me. I go up to I go up to the Mississippi and, and fish that. I think I've been up there three or four times uh, fishing smallies up there. And my last video um, was a was a smallie trip that I took a few weeks ago, and just I think I caught two or three over three pounds and caught seven or eight bass in like two hours it was absolutely an awesome trip i love going up there and the bass fishing is just it's just insane up there and to be able to make casts and and uh work lures in the middle of winter when you've been sitting over an ice house or a snow or a, a, a ice hole for you know months at a time is just a blast so Oh, was that you mud ducks and your crazy fishing red man 
the regulation book here in Minnesota looks like a freaking textbook. It's unreal. I'm all for regulations. I'm all for protecting the fish, but most of these don't even make sense in this state. So um, we'll see. I don't know. But um, I think I'm going to end this uh, right now, guys, and I'm going to move my tip-ups around and hopefully, uh, hopefully actually get on some fish here. But I appreciate you all coming in. Um, if you haven't, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Water and Ice Outdoors. Check out the videos that I have on here and uh, hopefully you guys will check out my uh, upcoming videos. So thanks for joining. Thanks for coming on here and uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the ice season and uh, tight lines.